Hey, it's Natasha here. Today I'm going to review Facebook CEO Sheryl Sandberg's book, Lean In. In this book, she gives women advices on how to make more progress in their career. So, should you read this book? Now, first of all, I don't even know what career advances mean anymore in our ever-changing world when everything is being redefined. If you know, good for you and tell me about it. So let's just assume that you know what you want out of your career, whatever that is. Given that, still, should you read this book? That really depends on what kind of person you are. Let's do a test. Suppose you're having a migraine right now. What would you do about it? Option one, take an Advil and forget about it. Hope it will get better. Option two, really start to think. Hmm, how does the headache relate to my physical, mental, emotional, spiritual well-being? What is my body trying to tell me? And if you choose option one, you. I'm sorry, I'm just very judgmental against people who are not like me. Because to me, life is too short not to pay attention. Oftentimes, our perceived problems in life are often doorways towards more fulfillment, more happiness, more well-being in life. If we can just pay attention, if we are willing to investigate instead of cramming down the pain with painkillers. Why am I even mentioning that? This is because the advices in this book read a lot like painkillers. Cheryl gave advices such as make sure you sit at the table at meetings because otherwise how are people going to notice you're even in the room? And also volunteer for high level assignments even if you don't think you're ready for it. Because your self-perception is just totally wrong, especially if you're a woman. And even if you're not wrong, just take up the assignment and you will stretch and learn and everything will be fine. Oh, oh, and this, the most important thing do not disengage from your job because of the baby when you don't even know who you're going to have the baby with. So what do you think of these advices? Do you like them? To me, you know, these advices to your career is just like painkillers to your headache. There's so many reasons why people are not sitting at the table at meetings. Maybe the chairs at the table suck. Maybe someone sitting at the table stinks. Sometimes it's just not appropriate. Or maybe you know the meeting is going to be long and boring and you will definitely fall asleep. So you don't sit at the table because you are not out of your mind. Only you will know what the real reason is. By the way, this whole thing about being assertive and confident in workplace is way overrated. We have self-doubts because we are human. I had like 12 of them in the first two hours I got up this morning. It just means it's a good day. If you doubt yourself, you're wise because you realize the natural fallibility of being human. If you have such extraordinary confidence that you think you can do anything in the world, I'm sorry, you're delusional. But what if being assertive or confident is really something you're concerned about? Should you read this book then? Well, you can take up some advices from here to correct your behaviors if that's what you want. Because some people say fake it to make it, whatever that means. Well, I suppose if you take on an action that doesn't feel natural to you and repeat it for enough times, you'll be able to fool some people other than yourself for a while. But the more interesting question is, why do you want to fake it? What is the it that you're so eager to get, even at a cost of faking? Because it's not comfortable to fake. It doesn't make you happy. But in case you want your career success more than your happiness, just know this. Research shows that the behavior of faking anything from confidence to orgasm is the number one cause of cancer in this country. Don't ask what my source is, just take my word for it. I would say, stop thinking there's something wrong with you. Especially if you're a woman. We women tend to think there's always something we can improve. From outside to inside. Our hair, our nails, our resume, our education. The fact is, there's nothing wrong with you. 99.9% .9 of the time. And stop allowing some self-help book to define for you a cookie cutter version of how you need to behave in order to succeed. The fact is, there is many different formula for success as the brands of hair shampoo out there. And you will know what's the formula for you if you start to understand how you're uniquely put together unlike any other human beings. And just as a side effect, knowing yourself and accepting the package that you come in with will give you this grounded natural confidence that not even a hundred hurricanes will be able to shake. By the way, does Cheryl become who she is by following advices from Cheryl? I have no doubt that she did everything she tells you to do in the book. 
But whether those are the reasons for a career success is a totally different question. I'll tell you this, if there is one thing in common among all the people who really make an impact in the world, it is this. They are all very much in touch with their self, the self with the capital S. They may not be aware of this, well in fact most of the time they don't. It's just like if you're a fish, you're not aware of water. Still, being so grounded in their SELF gives them the confidence, the creativity, the good luck, the whatever they need to move forward. The self is the energizer inside the energizer bunny. And the bunny runs around and writes a book and tells you, hey, if you wear pink and beat a drum, you'll be as energized as me. I think you get the idea. So read this book by all means and take an Advil if you have a headache. Because there's no harm, mostly. But will you be as successful as Ms. Sandberg by taking her advice? I'm not positive. But hey, know thyself, my friend. I'm not saying it's easy. But if you do, you will be a force in the world, no matter whether you sit at a table or not.